I write on print. He, he mentioned the fact that this is, of course, the 30th anniversary of the signing of the Joint Declaration. What plans are there, perhaps, to celebrate this important event? <laughs> I shall be looking to my uh, honourable friend for inspiration uh, as we look forward to commemorating the signing in good faith of that uh, declaration. I'm sure he will be full of ideas. Mr Speaker, uh, referring to my uh, good friend, the honourable member uh, for Gloucester, as I said in the Westminster Hall debate on Hong Kong on the 22nd of October, which he secured, uh, we strongly believe that it is the autonomy, rights and freedoms guaranteed by this joint declaration which underpin Hong Kong's success. He is right, by the way, to raise the regrettable incident recently when he too was refused a visa, this time to China itself, and when he and other members of the UK-China Leadership Forum, therefore, felt they had no choice but to postpone their visit to Shanghai for talks with the Communist Party. We again made clear to the Chinese authorities our view that refusing visas is no kind of solution. It is clearly counterproductive uh, that these talks have not now taken place. The important thing is to pursue dialogue on issues even where we disagree. I would equally emphasise my understanding that the FAC inquiry is also focused on the promotion of economic, cultural and educational links. My honourable friend, the member for uh, Reading West, stressed the importance of the economy and trading links. Last year, Hong Kong was the UK's second largest export market in Asia Pacific and Hong Kong was the UK's 12th largest investor. In addition, Hong Kong is an important factor in the UK's dynamic relationship with mainland China, for instance, as Hong Kong and London work together to develop the financial service infrastructure for the internationalisation of the RMB. These links are beneficial to the UK, China and Hong Kong and absolutely deserve the attention of the FAC. My honourable friend, the member for Ronford, uh, raised the issue of servicemen, former British servicemen in Hong Kong. We will look into this, although this was most properly a matter uh, for the uh, Home Department. But it is the case that around 250,000 British citizens live in Hong Kong and a further 3.4 million people, approximately half the population, hold the status of British nationals overseas, giving us a clear consular interest. Mr Speaker, for these reasons I can assure the House and those following this debate that the Government has been emphasising the context and importance of the inquiry at senior levels through official channels in Beijing, Hong Kong and London. I am grateful for the suggestion in the press today from the Honourable Member for Bristol East that the Foreign Office should be engaging with our, China counterpart, our Chinese counterparts on this. And I can tell her and others who raise this that this is precisely what we have been doing. Our Ambassador in Beijing, our Consul General in Hong Kong, myself and the Foreign Secretary have done so and have done so repeatedly. We cannot, I must make progress, please forgive me. We cannot, of course, ignore the context of political protests in Hong Kong, which have now been going on for over two months. We have publicly welcomed the Hong Kong police's stated commitment to exercise tolerance and restraint. As I have said before, it is essential that Hong Kong citizens' fundamental rights and freedoms, including of assembly and demonstration, continue to be respected as guaranteed by the Sino-British Joint Declaration. We have also consistently called on all sides to ensure that the demonstrations are peaceful and in accordance with the law. The issue at the centre of the protests is, of course, Hong Kong's democracy and specifically the arrangements for election of the Chief Executive in 2017. Mr Speaker, we believe that a transition to universal suffrage will safeguard Hong Kong's future prosperity and stability in line with the basic law and the aspirations of the people of Hong Kong. And that is why we continue to encourage the governments of Hong Kong and China to find a consensus that offers a genuine choice to the people of Hong Kong and gives them a real stake in the 2000 election for the Chief Executive and then in due course for the elections to the Legislative Council in 2020. Of course, the detailed arrangements for reform 
are for the people of Hong Kong and the governments of Hong Kong and the People's Republic of China to determine. The United Kingdom has consistently called on all parties to engage in dialogue within, within the parameters of the August decision by the National People's Congress. We believe there is scope for a consensus which will deliver a meaningful advance for democracy in Hong Kong consistent with the commitments which have been made. Mr Speaker, as Premier Li himself has said, we have an indispensable relationship with China. We have many shared interests, from our bilateral trade to our cooperation on global challenges such as Ebola. It is important that this relationship is conducted with mutual understanding and respect based on open and honest dialogue, and we will continue our endeavours to this end. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm grateful to the House for this debate. I think four things really have emerged from it. The first is that the Joint Declaration is still alive and well and that this Parliament will continue to take an interest in it. Second is that China would appear, it is the view of Parliament, that China are the losers uh, in this situation, both on a commercial and a strategic point of view. And thirdly, Whilst bilateral relations in the short term will suffer, we are quite capable of rebuilding them. The question for China is, can they? The Foreign Affairs Committee remains willing to visit Hong Kong if, if agreement can be reached. And finally, Mr. Speaker, uh, could I just simply say to the Minister of State, who has wound up, that the, my colleague, the member for um, Motherwell, posed a number of questions in his speech, and we would be grateful if he could, perhaps in, in writing, if he could let us have his answers to those questions. And finally, finally, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, can I thank you for your, the, your unfailing support for this yeah. process. Yeah, yeah. The winner in this yeah. is Parliament, and yeah. the quality of the debate has justified your decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Order. The question is that this House has considered the ban by China on the Foreign Affairs Committee visit to Hong Kong. As many as other opinions say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order. The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day.